Hello everyone, it's Sean from Tall Tree Audio. Today we are going to be looking at how to mix epic trailer music. Now a short disclaimer, I am not a mixing engineer, but I'm going to show you some simple tools to remove problem spots in your track and how to prep your mix for a mixing engineer to finish. Let's get started. Let's open up an empty project file. I have stems ready to go from a track that I just finished. Let's select all of those and pull them into the project. We're going to choose different tracks. Copy all files to project folder. Convert to project settings and copy to project folder if needed. Okay, here are all the tracks as well as the master. Now for this video, I did a quick mix of this track and then after I finished, I removed every EQ and processing plugin that I had so that we could start from scratch. Let's give the track a listen. Alright, that was a decent quick mix, but for this video we are shooting for better than that. Let's go ahead and organize our stems. Okay, we got all of our stems organized. Let me show you how I grouped everything. We've got keys up top, followed by synth, and that includes our sub and bass. Then we've got string, looks like I'm only using short strings here. Then brass, then percussion and then SFX, so signature sounds and risers, and miscellaneous. How we're gonna do it is I will play through the track and then just start picking things out that I notice with the mix and just start fixing. Let's take it away. Okay, the first big thing that I'm noticing is the brass is a bit too loud. Let's go to our mixer and over to brass. And I'm going to hit play again and then just move this down until I feel like it matches. That sounds pretty good. Just a couple of dB. Okay, I hear a sound that's sticking out. I think it's this bass trombone. Let's listen back. No, it's not that. I think it might be this horns flutter. Let's solo that out. It's a cool sound. Let's add some reverb and dial it back. Wow. 
adding reverb actually will take away some of the bite, so the perception of loudness won't be as high. Let's listen back. Still sounds a little too beefy. Let's take out some of the mids. That's starting to blend better. If at any point you hear something that I don't hear, feel free to leave it in the comments and we can talk about it. Let's start from the beginning again. Okay, I'm gonna stop it because we have three or four things happening in the low sub area and I think it's pretty muddy. Let's go and pick out the ones that we want to have and then the rest will remove some of the low end. Let's see if there's any low end in these risers. A little bit, not too bad. That has quite a bit of low end. Let's look at the spectrum. I think we can just clean that up. This is Cubase's native EQ. Don't really need anything special when you're removing. My personal rule of thumb is if I'm removing frequencies, I will use a transparent EQ or one that doesn't have a lot of color. And then if I'm adding anything, I will use an EQ with more character. So I'm gonna just put this in front of the spectrum so we're not using our eyes to fix the sound. Let's just listen to the low end. Right now I'm using a shelf. Let's try and turn it to a cut. Let's listen back and see how that sounds. It might be a little too much. No, I kind of like it. Okay, we move up here and can see the sub boom. Let's listen to that. That's one, and I think this one is different. That one has a lot more click. So I want to make this one stand out more, but not necessarily this one. I'm going to cut this and put this onto a new track. Like so. Now we can edit this one. I want it to just stick out a bit more. I'm gonna add an exciter to this. One that I really like to use is OTT. It's made by Exver and it's free. Go check it out. Okay, let's listen to a before and after. Here's before. Here's after. I think we can add a little bit more still, maybe a little extra high end. Okay, let's do a before and after again. And now. Nice, it sticks out a bit more. Let's listen to everything. That's cool. All right, let's continue to some of the other sub sounds. Okay, I hear this guy. What's important about that sound? I would say not so much the low end, uh, but more of the grittiness, which incidentally is more in the high areas.
Let's use our Studio EQ again. And same thing, I'm not using the visual to aid me in the mixing. That's cool. We're just pulling down a few dB and it's really opening up the sound. Listen to before and after. Here's before. Here's after. And let's listen all together. As soon as we removed some of the low end of that, all of a sudden other sounds are poking out. Let's go find them. Looks like we've got two different low pulses here. Let's listen to them in turn. Okay, that doesn't have a whole lot of low end, which is nice. Um, let's check the other one. Yeah, that is just a wash with low sub information. I'm going to unmute everything and then adjust as needed. I think we can control this sound a bit more, so I'm going to add a compressor. This is the LA two way, it's from Universal Audio. Okay, that's cool. Let's move to our first big hit. Okay, there's a lot of stuff we can fix with this, but first I'm going to make the tail last longer. This isn't so much of mixing as it is just personal preference. Let's find the sound we want to ring out more. Not bad. That one would be cool. I want that to ring out more. Looks like we're using it three times in the track. Let's hear it in context with the other times and see if it's going to sound weird. Should be fine there. Should be fine there. The trick that I use to get these sounds to ring out more is put a reverb on and then put an exciter on or a distortion. Let's go with Valhalla Room and I'm going to solo it. So is the low end really important to this sound? I don't think so because we have big kicks happening right there anyway. So I can probably remove some of the low. Okay, we're getting there. 
Let's add the exciter. I'm going to use OTT again. Now it has a little too much high end, and so I'm just going to pull down on the high end here. That sounds pretty good. Let's listen in context. That's cool. So here's before. And here's after. That's nice. All right, let's get more into this. Let's see what this is. I'm not sure. So some type of flutter uh, whoosh. It's cool. Let's remove some of the mids. Oh, and that low. Look at that low. Again, we're deciding, okay, we have this sound. What is important about this sound? What is the sound contributing? And it's not so much the low end. We already have the low end covered. Let's listen back. Okay, let's go in and check these certos and see what they're sounding like. So very beefy, um, pretty natural sounding drums. And it looks like I use them for a lot of the track. Let's listen to the back end with just these soloed. Let's see if we can clean that up. I feel like we have a lot of muddiness here. And the nature of this track as a whole is pretty hybrid. So I feel okay about adding some distortion or excitement to this specific sound just because it sounds very unprocessed. Let's try this saturation knob from SoftTube. This is also free. I would recommend getting it. So I have to turn down the volume because I'm turning up the saturation. That's pretty cool. Let's listen back. I think we lost some beefiness there, but I feel like this hit as a whole was sticking out pretty hard. Let's listen back from the beginning and see. It's not bad. Let's listen to these toms and see what they're doing. So that has a lot of energy. Maybe we can boost these and take these down. Let's listen to them together. I like the high end where it's at with these toms. And that's pr providing a lot of beefiness, a lot of thud.
Maybe we can just raise this just a hair. 2 dB. Let's see how that sounds. That's cool. Let's see what these ones are doing. Those also have a lot of thud. It looks like these are quiet here and louder here. I wonder if we took this and put it here, what that would sound like. Let's try that out. Oh no, it's not the same part. It was a good thought. Maybe we just raise this in volume and gain. Let's try that. This is all three of them together. That's pretty cool. I'm still getting a lot of low end mud from this. Especially that ringing out. That's taking up a lot of space in the mix. What if we just fade this out more? Let's see how that sounds. It might be a little too drastic of a volume change. Okay, let's leave that hit for now and move on to this low signature sound. That's cool. Let's just remove some of that unneeded low end. Let's try that out. That's cool. Okay, let's start over. I think that sub boom could ring out a little bit more as well. Since we have OTT on it, I'm gonna add reverb before and then OTT like that trick I talked about. Okay, I'm hearing some unwanted noise when that stop happens. Let's listen and see what, or actually we could probably just look and see what is playing during that. Yeah, so there's that rhythm pulse, that rhythm. We want that to cut right off. Let's try that out. Yeah, that's nice. Let's see what that little impact is doing. Oh, I very much like that. <laughs> I like that a lot. Maybe we could do some panning. I could manually pan this, but I'm feeling extra lazy. So I'm gonna add auto pan. That's cool. We'll just boost it a bit. Let's see how that sounds in the mix now. Oh, we could
can bring it out quite a bit more. Cubase has this handy auto gain or pre gain, and I use that quite a bit. Yeah, that's nice. I like that a lot. So there's a lot of high end in, in that pre whoosh. A lot of high end. Let's see what we can do to minimize that. Is it that one or is it? There, that's the one. That sounds quite a bit better. Let's listen in context. Cool. I still feel like the brass is just a bit too loud. Let's see if we can bring that down a bit more. And I also think that riser still has too much high end in it. Let's take some more out. That's sounding good. We have this bass synth that's very aggressive. And it cuts off really abruptly. So I'm thinking I might just fade it out. So if we cut here, cut here, and cut here. And then just do fades on all of those. Let's try that out. Let's see how that sounds in context. In context. Let's have the last one be more abrupt. I, I kind of like that. And just a hair less, but that's the right idea. Okay. Nice, I like that. Let's see how our sub is doing. I think I'm going to remove some of this low end from this bass synth to let the sub do its work. Okay, let's try those two together. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, let's listen to everything. Let's hear the low end in the brass. How low is the low end in the brass? almost nothing, so that's good. We're gonna add our sub and our bass synth because this is kind of our chord stack and see how those sound together. Okay, now we're going to employ a trick that I stole from the world of EDM. We're going to sidechain our bass using LFO tool. Okay, I went ahead and set that up it takes a bit of routing trickery to set this sidechain up, so if you're interested in learning how to do that, just comment on the video or send me a message.
but moving forward, I am sidechaining every downbeat. So not every percussion hit is getting sidechained, just the main, like, top measures. And let's go ahead and dial in that sidechain, because you can decide how deep you want it to go, or how much volume reduction you want. Let's go all the way down and see what it sounds like so you can kind of hear it more drastically. Let's see how that sounds. Okay, let's listen back without and see if you can hear a difference in the percussion specifically. Okay, and here's with. The idea is that I'm just reducing the bass during the kick to let the kick come through more or let those percussion hits come through more. Awesome, let's move forward. So here we have a horn crescendo, and it looks like the trumpet is also crescendoing. So I want to model that with the synth as well, so that it, it comes down right here and then back up again. So we'll do that with the bass synth and also with the sub. I'm just going to make a point here and a point here and drag down. And same thing on the sub. Great, let's listen back and see how that sounds. So you feel the effect, it's dropping out and then rising back up. And I think I might look for an extra whoosh here, or a rise. This next section is the back end of the track and we want it to rise up into that. Let's see if we can just steal one of these. How about this one? I think that'll work. We're just gonna cut it and make it shorter for that spot. So the riser should end right here. like so, and then we don't need nearly as long of a rise. Right there is where we can start. So just making this larger, you can see I'm just going to fade it in until that. Let's listen and see how that sounds. We may have to edit this. That's a pretty hard cutoff. Let's see what we can do with that. Yeah, I like that much better. Let's listen again. That 
That's nice. Do you hear what I'm hearing with this bass synth? Listen to the hard cutoff. It kind of sounds funky. Let's see if we can do the same thing, decrescendo that. I'm just going to cut here and fade out. Man, that kind of sounds funky. What if I did something really tricky and just took the attack here and put an extra note in? Let's try that. It sounds kind of funky, so let's go like, we'll do that and that. So we have a different sounding attack. Oh man, that does sound weird. Okay, so I'm going to crossfade these. See if we can get rid of the attack. Yeah, that's not bad. Okay, let's listen to those strings. Oh, it looks like we do have a sustain. Let's listen to those with the brass. So are they helping? What are they? What do you guys think? Here's what then muted. Yeah, I think they're definitely helping. I don't really have much to change about that. Maybe just a little bit more high end. See if we can get them to poke through. Let's check out the spiccatos. Okay, listen with the brass. I would like to hear those a bit more. So to do that, I'm going to cut some space out of the brass so that these poke through more. Let's go to our group tracks. Here we have string. And in the latest Cubase update, there is this new feature here where you can pick an overlay. So now we're going to see the string frequency range as well as the brass spectrum. Let's see if we can cut around here and just let those strings kind of come through. So we'll select brass. Cool, let's do a back and forth to see if we like that. That sounds pretty good right there. Okay, let's listen all together. Nice. Let's listen back to the whole thing.
there is a cool signature sound thing that's happening. It's this. That's cool. Let's see if we can bring that out a bit more, because I maybe have it pan from left to center, or see if we can make it more apparent, because it's cool. First, let's just add some gain, see if that fixes what we need. That's pretty cool. Let's see if we can do some panning as well. Yeah, I like that. With the with the panning information that we have now, we can turn it back down a bit. Because your ears are drawn to it a lot easier. Alright, I feel like individually our stems are sounding pretty good. Let's go in to the group stems and make some edits there. For example, for the strings I'd like to compress a little bit. Let's dial in this compression now. Okay, I'm going to solo this out so we can add our gain back in. So, to me, what this is doing is bringing the strings a bit forward and bringing them together as a whole. I mean, this is three different string libraries. Let's see how that sounds in the mix. See, now I feel like we can turn the strings down a bit. And then I would like to boost right here at the end so you can hear more string. Because that's a cool part. We'll just edit the volume here. Maybe just a hair more. That's cool. Let's listen back. See how those strings are coming in more now? Oh, I really like that. All right, let's do the same thing with the brass. Let's add some compression. I find that this API 2500 is great on brass.
That's cool. It's giving it a bit of color, which I really like. All right, let's listen to the percussion, see if we need to do any compression there. My instinct says yes. I'm going to add an EQ here. We may need to EQ this a bit. That's sounding good. Now I'm going to add OTT to this. You know, this is trailer music, so we're going for as loud and in your face as possible. Throwing OTT on this can really help your mix pop, especially in the percussion. Cool, let's listen to that, just the percussion, so you can hear what it's doing. Okay, that's off, here's on. Just sounds a bit more drastic. Okay, I think this riser can come out a little bit more. Let's try two decibels. Well, let's try one decibel. Yeah, that sounds pretty sweet. All right, there's only one thing left to do, and that is to listen to a before and after. I went ahead and gain matched the original, so you can hear the changes we've made without any difference in volume. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. If you liked the video, please hit subscribe, and as always, you can leave questions or comments down below, and I'd be happy to help. I've also included downloads in the description so you can compare the original versus the mixed version. Thanks, and see you next time.